Um, good evening, I'm Pietro, and today, together with my colleagues Mary and Jessica, we'll be presenting how to add an instruction to the GNU assembler. So we have been working on extending Core 5, which is a risk five variation. More specifically, our initial focus is to extend the compiler and assembly to support a number of instruction set extensions, starting with hardware loop. Um, today, we'll be walking you through the process of adding an instruction. It's important to note that while the examples and files shown are risk five specific, the information is transferable to other architecture ports. Um, we'll be using CV star I as an example throughout the presentation. CV star I is part of the core five hardware loops extension and declares the address of the offset to the start of the loop as well as the loop number, which can be zero or one, depending if it's an inner or an outer loop. Here you can see the generic pattern of the CV star I instruction. Um, in order to follow this implementation, um, some changes will need to be made. So we need to modify the opcodes library, both in coding and decoding, and also modify the assembler to use the new table entries. Here you can see all the main files changed. So let's implement a new instruction. So first we add the instruction to the RISC-V opcodes structure, which contains all the instructions available for the RISC-V architecture. Note that the structure is generic, but the specifics of it are risk five. So in other words, all the architectures we have similar tables, but the details vary from architecture to architecture. So let's break it down. First, we have CV star I, which is the name of the instruction. Um, Xlang, which indicates the instruction length requirements, either 32 or 64 or zero, zero for both. Um, the instruction class, which is defined in the risk five header file inside in a num set. So in this example, we had to add a specialized class for the hardware loop extension. This might not be necessary if your new instruction already fits an existing class. We have the instruction operands, which in this example are DI and B1, DI mapping to the loop number, while B1 maps to the immediate. And they are given the order they appear in the symbolic assembler and not the encoded instruction, as you can see. We then have our match and mask defining the risk five opcodes header file. So instruction marks are, masks are used to hard code common encoding fields in the instruction, instruction, such as the opcode, and also to mask preset bits with one in the upper end encoding fields. You can see that the match is calculated by ending the encode with the mask. Um, and here you can see a table that shows how the mask works for a CV star I example. It hard codes the source register, function, the destination register, and the opcode. And we then have a match field checking the encoding. We then have the match function, which determines if a word corresponds to this instruction. So match opcodes will give you a simple pattern match, meaning that it doesn't require any additional assistance from the function. And the match function does the encoding and mask equals match calculation that I previously mentioned, but in a different manner, as you can see meaning that in the actual code base, a different Boolean formula is used, but it is equivalent. And lastly, we have pinfo, a collection of bits describing the instruction, notably any relevant hazard information. For example, it can be used to indicate it is an alias, a macro, or even a branch instruction. Jessica will now give details on this assembly and assembly. Thank you, Pietra. The other file that must be edited in the opcodes directory is risc5dis.c. In this file, there is a function called print instant args, which disassembles a bitstream. All operands must be added to this function. We can use this to ensure that our instructions are being printed out correctly during assembly. As described later, this is essential for testing. The example on this slide is the branch F offset operand b1. I would like to draw your attention to the extract macro which must be defined in, include, in the include opcode directory in the RISC-5 header file. This macro extracts only the bits used for the B1 operand from the bitstream. The, other, operands are the up other operations are specific for this operand. The immediate field refers to a half word address because instructions are on half word boundaries. We shift it left one bit to turn it into a full byte address and the PC is required as the offset is PC relative. So now we move on to the gas config directory. In the file tcrisv.c, the validate risc5 instruction function ensures that all bits in the instructions are set. 
The ENCODE macro, which is defined in the RISC-5 header file, is passed a value of all ones. This returns a value with only the bits set, set by the operand high. This is then ORed with all the bits set so far. The example on this slide is the loop number, which would only return the value of one in the seventh bit position. At the end of this function, all bits in the variable used bits must be set to one, otherwise an error will be generated. In this same file, there is a function called RISC-5IP, RISC IP, which assembles an instruction into its binary format. All, op all operands must be added here. In this function, you can check that an operand is an acceptable value. This example shows the code for a loop number. As previously explained, a loop, loop number is a constant value of zero or one. In this function, we check these bounds and the type. And if it is not what is expected, then we produce an error. The main part of this function that does most of the work is the insert operand macro. To ensure that the insert operand macro works correctly, in the RISC-5 header file, a mask for the bits encoded for the operand and the offset of the encoded bits must be defined. These are used in the insert operand macro along with the instructions of code and the value of the operand to produce the instructions binary representation. Mary will now discuss testing and building. Thank you, Jessica. Now that we have added an instruction, we come to the most important step, testing. To test the assembler, Binutils has the gas test suite. The tests assemble the given input and pattern match the produced disassembly output with the given expected disassembly. To add a test for RISC 5, add an assembly file, disassembly file, and if the tests expect to fail, a .l file. The group of files that belong to the same test must all have the same name. An example of a CV start I input test is shown on the slide here. The corresponding output file is shown here. You can see the assembler options include a mArch option. This will be discussed in more detail when I explain how to run the assembler. The next line describes the disassembly options, dash D for option dump. Since the tests use pattern matching, it is possible to use regular expressions in the tests. Finally, we need to build it. This slide shows the commands I use to build the assembler. I create and enter a, bin, bin, a build directory. Then I run configure with the core 5 specific target. Next, I run make all gas and run the tests with make check gas. If all the tests pass, use make install gas to install the assembler to the given install directory. To use the assembler, run the command shown on this slide, where test.s is your assembly file. The mArch option tells the assembler that the instructions belong to the 32-bit base integer RISC-V instruction set with the standard multiply and compressed extensions and a core 5 hardware loop custom extension. This is made possible with a few other steps, such as adding the core 5 hardware loop instruction class to the include opcode risk 5 header that we showed earlier. The other steps will not be mentioned today. Thank you all very much for listening. If you'd like more information, please come to our talk at the RISC-V meetup on Monday. Please feel free to ask any questions now.